So our app is now hooked up to Firebase, but before we can start writing to our Firebase data and reading data from it, we first need to design that database and figure out exactly how we're going to structure this data. So we're going to be using a real-time database. So I'm going to jump back to the Firebase console. I'm going to close this. Click on database. Uh, we have two types of database, the Firestore, Cloud Firestore, and the real-time database. I'm going to use the real-time database because it's a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to click on create database here, and I'm going to click on start in test mode. Now this means anyone can read or write to our database, so you certainly wouldn't want to have a production app in test mode, but it just makes it easier to work with as you're developing your app. So I'm going to click on enable. And we now have a real-time database. Our real-time database is basically just a really big JSON object. And we don't store arrays within a real-time database. We just store basically objects within objects within objects. And we can structure our database using this interface here. So if we want to add a new node, we can just click on this Add button. So let's say we wanted to add an object to store users. We could create a Users node. And then within that, we could create a user with their user ID as the key. So let's say user ID one. And then within that, we could add all of their details. So their name and their email. So we could add a field for the name and a field for the email. Then if we click add, then it's now added all of these nodes to our database. However, this interface can be a little bit clunky. So what we can do instead is we can create a JSON file and then import that. So let's do that. So back in our code, I'm just going to create a new file in the statics folder called data structure dot JSON. And I'm going to structure the database here and then import it into Firebase. So in a JSON file, we first need a root object. And within this, we can start structuring our data. So what we're going to need for this app? Well, we're going to need somewhere to store all of our users so that we can display them on this users page. And we're going to need somewhere to store our chats and all our messages. So let's structure the users first. So we'll add an object called users. And within this object, we can store all of our users. And we can store the data for each user within an object with that user's unique ID as the key. So let's just set up the first user. So let's say they have an ID of user ID one. We can create an object with that as the key, and then we can put their details within there. So what fields are we gonna need for each user? Well, we're gonna need a name, we're gonna need their email address, and we're gonna need their online status. So I'll add a name field. And I'll set that to Danny for this user. I'm going to need an email field, which I'll set to Danny at tests.com. I'm going to need an online field, which I'll set to true. So that's our first user setup. I'm going to duplicate this and create another user. And we'll give them an ID of user ID 2. I'll set the name to Jim. Set the email to jim at test.com and I'll just leave the online set to true. So this is how we're going to structure our users within the database. But we also need to store our chats in the database. So after the users object, I'll create another object called chats where we can store our chats. And again, we can store the chats for each user underneath their unique user ID. So this first user, we can put their chats within an object within that user ID. So I'll create an object with the user ID of the first user, user ID one. And within here, we can store all of their chats. So let's say this first user, Danny, with the ID user ID one, has been chatting with Jim, who has the ID user ID two. Well, we can store that chat within Jim's user ID. So I'll create another object with Jim's user ID as the key. So user ID two. 
and we can store all of the messages of this particular chat between user one and user two within here. So we can store each message within an object with the message unique ID as the key. So I'll create an object for the first message with the ID message ID one. And within that, we can store the data for this particular message. And each message is gonna need a text field and a from field. So we know what the text is of the message and we know who it's from. So we'll add a text field and I'll just set that to hi, how are you? And we need a from field and I'll set this to them. So this is a message from Jim that's been sent to Danny. And I'll add another message. I'll just duplicate this one. Give this the ID of message ID two. And I'll set the text to good thanks, how are you? And this is gonna be from me. Now this chat is currently only stored within the first user's data underneath this user ID one key. Well, this other user was also involved in this chat. So they also need their own copy of this chat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate all of this user ID one object and adjust it for the other user. So I'll copy this, paste that in there. And in this case, this is gonna be the second user's chat. So I'll set this user ID one to user ID two. And they've been chatting with the first user, user ID one. So I'll change this next key to user ID one. And in this case, this first message is gonna be from me. So I'll change them to me. And the second message is gonna be from them. Save that. Okay, so I think we're just about done with this database structure. We've got somewhere to store our users and somewhere to store all our chats and messages. So let's import this file to Firebase now. So I'm gonna jump back to the Firebase console, back to the real-time database. And if we click on this little menu button here, click on import JSON, click browse, and I'm gonna to jump to that file that we've just created. So that's in smack chat, source, statics, and data structure.json. Click on import. Great, and you can see it's added all of this data to our Firebase database now. So once we've set up authentication for our app so our users can register and log in, we'll be able to read from this database and write to it as well. In the next video, we're gonna start setting up authentication for our app. We're gonna add the ability for users to register and log in to the app using Firebase. Make sure you click my head to subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment. If you want to grab the source code for this app, go to dannys.link slash code. And if you want to learn all of the basics of Quasar Framework, Vue.js, Vuex and Firebase, then check out my full course at dannys.link slash quasar.